Kick and chase by Mullins. Kick and chase again by Mullins. This will be a miracle. Oh, it is a miracle. Fafina tries to crash his way over. He does. Fafina got the ball over the line. Hunter's kick is over the sideline for a 40 20. Yeah, good day, champions, and welcome to the 40 20 Sports Podcast. Huge news here with our round five teams are in for the week. Just want to give a massive congratulations to Wayne, coach of Hell's Grannies, with a 1,253, scored himself first spot in the 4020 Cup. Congratulations, mate. Well done. Awesome super coaching from you. Uh, also, a big shout out to the Debbie, sitting in 20th spot with 4,478. They're coming first in the league. They are streaks ahead. Well, not streaks ahead, but they're doing really good. Ranked 20th overall, so it's a really strong competition in our super coach teams in the 4020 Cup at the moment, which is awesome to see. The Ferrets, we got 1,105. Pretty happy with that score, considering I captained Turbo, which is a bit disappointing. I was umming and ahhing whether to go him or the Hammer, and got the better of me going Turbo against the Dragons, but not to be. Uh, we are sitting in 9,400, so we had an uptick of about 12 or 13,000 for the week, which is good. Currently 61st in the 4020 Cup, so we are getting those green arrows, which is awesome to see. Um, for anyone looking to join that league code, you still have until round eight, so you need to get in quick. The league code is 726638. Uh, got a giveaway of a merch pack. We got hats, stickers, T-shirts, stubby coolers, all that sort of stuff. Um, just starting to get all that stuff in now, so we are going to start giving some giveaways on our Instagram account. We're going to start promoting our page a little bit harder, getting into it a bit more. Um, so if you'd like to follow us on Instagram, jump over to there. We've got giveaways coming in soon, so please jump on. Want to get a nice little community going on in the Instagram world. Love getting all the feedback from everyone and people asking for advice. I, I was a bit a bit chaotic this weekend. I was away for the long weekend, but still, getting back to everyone who's got any questions, please flick them through. Look us up on Instagram. Happy to answer any of the questions you've got. Anyway, we'll get into it. We'll get onto the Super Coach business. For the Thursday game, we've got the Storm up against the Broncos, possibly the hardest matchup the Broncos could have wished for on this Thursday night game. Storm coming off a bye. Previous to that, they had an absolute stinker up in Newcastle. They were terrible. Um, still, only, still got within two points of the Knights. So that is promising stuff for the Storm. Broncos, they're battered and bruised. They're down troops, but they do have their little master back, Adam Reynolds. He steered them around the park last week. His kicking game was phenomenal. So they will be relying very heavily on him to steer them around the park. But anyway, for the Storm, Ryan Pappenhausen, Warbrick and Coates on the wings. Meany, Remus Smith, Cam Munster comes back. Huge news for Cam Munster. Anyone who is looking to own him. 5 has been fucking skinny as anything these last couple of weeks. So... I think Cam Munster is probably a decent look at this week, to be honest. If you're going to get him, you probably want to get in there quicker than later because you do have origin duties coming along. So the more you can milk out of Cameron Munster, probably the better there. Comes in with Jerome Hughes, and that makes up the back uh, back seven there. I think Pappenhausen, if you didn't jump on him the week before and you've still got a fullback sitting there that you're not too happy with, I think jump onto him. He's probably not going to be this cheap for much longer, so jump on. For the forwards, Kamakamitha, Harry Grant, Josh King, Sean Bloor, Eliasa Katoa, and Trent Liero round out the four, the 13. Joey Chan still not there, so he may be a bit of a headache for owners that have got him sitting on their pine, although he's only 230k, so he's not going to cause you too many dramas. Um, Harry Grant, kept Harry Grant. Harry, I didn't, Harry, happy I didn't go him to Appy. Appy only got the 45 on the weekend, but still made a heap of cash. But Harry Grant owners who did hold on to him. We'll be looking for some serious points coming out of him before it looks like origin period comes along. Sean Bloor's a good one um, there in the second row. Should play 80. Looked pretty good last week. I think he got a 40-50 sort of thing. All in base, nothing special. But he'll be one to watch if the Storm forward pack gets a bit of a roll on. He's playing outside Cam Munster, which is hot property. So one to watch there. Wishart Welsh. Tepo Amaroa and Alec McDonald round out the bench there for the Storm. Interesting one is still no Nass, no Nelson Asafa Solomona, which is a little bit concerning for Harry Grant owners because Harry Grant does get a lot of super coach points off Nass. So 
I'm not sure what's going on there. He seems to have another week in Q Cup, so I would fucking hate to be coming up against him in reserve grade. But anyway, that is what they are dealing with. For the Broncos, a little bit battered and bruised, but still had a phenomenal game last week. They looked sensational. Um, again, it was Reynolds just kicking game, getting them into good field position. But it was also the back three, Tristan Saylor, Jesse Arthurs, Dean Marina, Marina, sorry, doing the chasing. They they were putting the Cowboys under all sorts of pressure, which was awesome to see. So Broncos fans will be happy with that. They'll be expecting a lot more than that out of this game going down to Melbourne. They are Tristan Saylor, Jesse Arthurs, and Dean Mariner on the sting. Could Tony Staggs and Selwyn Cobbo in the centres, in the halves, Ezra Mam and Adam Reynolds. Ezra Mam, pleasing to see him with Adam Reynolds back inside him. Seems to be a little bit more confident there. Scored a couple of tries, scored a try on the weekend, which is good to see. So I'm not sure too many people have held on to Ezra Mam, but he still is. He, he could potentially be a buy coming into the origin period if he stays nice and cheap. Hopefully he gets back into the groove of things and gets some tries like he did last year. The forwards, we've got Corey Jensen and Fletcher Baker up front with Billy Wilders at the hooking position. Jaden Hunt, he continues there in the second row. Really good to see him. I thought he was pretty good. Decent defensively. He wasn't afraid to run out and put a bit of a shot on. So give him another week. Don't bring him in. He does have Pia Kura to come back. I would like to get a bit more information about how far off he is. But still, Jaden Hunt, if... Pia Kura's injury seems to be going a little bit longer than expected, and he gets another good score in this one. He could be a serious option. Jordan Ricky and Paddy Carrigan in the 13. Paddy Carrigan's been fucking massive since Payne Haas has been out. Um, scored a 70-something this week, basically in base. Um, very little attacking upside, just all work ethic for Paddy Carrigan. So good to see him rewarding some owners. From the bench, Tyson Smoothie, Benjamin Tekura. That is an interesting one because Xavier Willison isn't anywhere to be named. So I don't have it here that he is injured or anything. I didn't really see him go down with a head knock, but that could potentially be something that we've missed. So, yeah, one to watch. Xavier Willison, I'm actually pretty happy about that given that I am looking to make trades elsewhere. So hopefully he can come into the squad next week and we can look at to get him in there somewhere. We've got, yeah, Kobe Hetherington and Corey Oates backing out the bench position there. For the first of the Friday games, we've got the Dogs versus the Roosters. The Dogs, I'll tell you what, they their defence is better. The defence is a lot more grittier, and Cameron Serraldo is distilling that defensive effort for them. Only got 20 points put against them by the Rabbitohs team, who is, I, I know they're battling and I know they're struggling, but they were decent. That left-hand edge caused, will cause any team a lot of drama. Jackie Whiten had a bit of a field day out there, but still, I thought the dogs keeping them to 20 were pretty decent. The Roosters, they'll be wanting a serious bounce back from that Panthers game, so I've got, I've got the Roosters to run away with it, but I think it'll be a pretty even contest at the start of the game with this one. So with the Doggies, the back seven there is Blake Taff, Blake Wilson, and Connor Tracy. Jacob Carraz and Stephen Crichton in the centres there. Um, Matt Burton and Drew Hutchison. Drew Hutchison, I think he has been a lot better super coach wise NRL-wise, I think he's been getting a lot worse. The attack just stops with him. He's super clunky with the ball. Every time he seems to get the ball and try and shift it out the right-hand side, he seems like he doesn't know what he's doing, he doesn't have anything planned, and he sort of gets a little bit stuck, flustered, and then just takes the hit up, which is actually scoring him more points than passing the ball. So, look, if you've got him in super coach, I'll be keeping him. I'm still not convinced that Toby Sexton doesn't get that spot. But anyway, Blake Wilson comes onto the wing. Uh, that is for Josh Adokar, knocked out trying to score a try there. So, he will be gone for at least a week. Blake Wilson comes back into that side. The forwards, Max King, Reed Marnie, Sam Hughes starts at prop. I'm not reading into this at all. Um, it looks pretty. It looks pretty seeing a little green tick next to his name, but still, I'm not reading into it at all. I've seen what's happened to Liam Knight and Farmer Silly when they've came in, and they still only get 20 minutes. Unbelievably, though, even if he does get 20 minutes, I still think he's going to get a bit of an uptick of the 13 points he pulled out on the weekend. Luckily, I didn't have him or I didn't have an auto-emergency or any dramas there, so I didn't get his score. But, yeah, he's he's becoming a bit of a nightmare. But hopefully they can put him into that front row position in the starting side and he gets 25 to 30 minutes and can get mid-30s. I'd be, I'd be stoked with that at how that's all playing out at the moment. 
Still not convinced that he even starts, so anything could happen there. Uh, kick out, Josh Curran and Jamin Salmon come on in the 13. Now, I, I think this looks really good for Curran. I think Curran should potentially play 80. If he doesn't, if he doesn't play 80 on that edge, I still think he'll get 60 minutes to 70 minutes sort of thing. Jamin Salmon's been coming on for Preston on that right-hand edge and relieving him of the duties. So even if that does happen, I can still see a world where Josh Curran moves back into the middle, which would be awesome for owners. You know, going out wide, trying to get a few attacking opportunities there. He does have attacking upside when he does play a second-row forward role. So will be one to watch. I think that's a good thing for Joshy Curran getting that. I also would not freak out. There's been a lot of talk about him getting front-row forward duels. He's already played four games as a front row forward. So there, there should be no question about it that he should be playing or getting those duels at front row forward, which will really help us out come around origin time and in the next couple of weeks if there needs to be a couple of trades there. On the interchange, Kurt Mann, Harrison Edwards and Liam Knight. Also, Katoga gets a start there for the Doggies. Could be a bit of an uptick for Jamin Salmon. If you do have an opportunity to go between Salmon and Burbo, if you're looking to sell one of those, I'm, I'm more inclined to sell Burbo coming up against Penrith and you've got Jamin Salmon sitting there. If Joshy Curran goes onto the edge there and wants to play 80, they could go Salmon back into the middle. So one to watch. I'll be holding on to Salmon for one more week if you've got the option between him and Burbo. For the Roosters, they have Teddy at the back, Tupu and Young hitting the oh, the wings. If you jumped on to Dominic Young, bloody hell. I, I understand you, you've now got the price rise and that's awesome, but coming up against the Panthers, it was always a long shot for the points he was going to get. Do not do anything rogue. Trade him out. You know, the Panthers, super hard opposition. He'll come good. I, I'm, I'm convinced he scores at least one try against the Doggies outfit. But anyway, we've got Sueli and Joey Manu. A lot of attention, I think, needs to be drawn to Joey Manu playing that roaming sort of position. I think now that the oppositions are going to be relatively easy for the next two weeks, they've got the Dogs, then the Knights coming up. Joey Manu, 20-odd-something points in tackle busts alone. So he looks real hot property there. Luke Keery and Sam Walker in the halves. Starting forwards, we've got Wera Hargraves, Brandon Smith, and Lindsay Collins. Nat Butcher, Angus Crichton comes on for Satili Tupanua. Victor Radley in the 13. I would be, I am a Tupanua owner and I'm selling. I think he, he still has a 35 to 37 point break even. Him coming off the bench, I don't think he's going to match that. Um, I just can't see a world where he still gets the 50, 60 minutes that he needs to get those 40 points, although he could come on and score a, a, a sneaky try. He does have a lot of attacking upside, although only getting the 49 with a try, I sort of expected a little bit more out of that sort of performance for him. But again, his minutes are just super limited. So I'm going to cut ties with Tupanua. I'm going to keep a Morgan Smithy sort of fella who I know what his minutes are. I know he's going to get mid 40s. I'm happy with that. Tupanua will be traded out for me, I would imagine. Angus Crichton coming on to the bench, maybe a look in a couple of weeks, but still, I still think he gets only 60, 60 minutes, 50 to 60 minutes, so could be a bit of a bit of a ball breaker. On the bench, Connor Watson, oh, on the bench, Connor Watson, Nafua White, Satili Tupanua, and Terrell May. Um, buddy hell, I would love to see Lindsay Collins fall out of that side again. Terrell May was amazing, getting a 77. Oh, just massive motor, massive work rate, huge amount of runs. Good to see from him. I'm sure everyone, if, if nobody has him, still go and buy him because he's underpriced at the moment. I don't think it matters. He's coming off the bench. Um, I, You know, the, Jared Wera Hargraves has started, the name to start, and they've still put Terrell May into the starting squad. So don't get too overawed with that. Lindsay Collins coming back from a hamstring injury. Still could see a world where he comes off the bench instead and they ease him into his minutes. So one to watch there, but that'll be very exciting. They they still have Michael Jennings' as 18th man. I I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. I am not sure about what he's doing, what his stats are in New South Wales Cup, but they also obviously rate him pretty highly. For the late Friday game, we've got the Knights versus the Dragons. Ponga for the Knights, Ponga at fullback, Jenkins and Nari Tawala. Gagai comes back from his medical condition. I'm not sure what that was all about, but he seems to be back. 
Bradman Best, Jack Cogger, and Jackson Hastings now comes into the seven with Jack Cogger as the six. I think this whole Jack Cogger thing has really fucked the Knights. I, I think they have listened to too much outside noise on this. Jack Cogger, look, he has not set the world alight as of yet. He's been decent. But I just, I, I hate this swapping of halves. There's there's no cohesion that you can build in it. So, like I've said many times, I am a Knights fan, so it is really hard to see this sort of shit where Cog comes in and one week, that's another thing, one week he's the dominant half, next week he's the non-dominant half and he's going to be 5'8". Now, whether he keeps his, le- keeps his left-hand edge or not, Jacko Hastings I would love to see down the left-hand edge. I think he frees Ponger up better than anyone Ponga sort of, he, he got an amazing score, 100 plus score. Well done to anyone held on to him, but he sort of had to create a lot of that himself. So, Cogger didn't really unleash him. Ponga just started to, he, he sort of floated in and out of the game, but he did inject himself at the right times, and a lot of kick returns were where he got a lot of his points. Gago coming ba- back will be awesome for that side. Have a look at some of his base stats. He has been enormous. He's been basing about 40 something points. Awesome to see for Gags. He's. He has an age today. He looks really good. The wing pairing for the Knights is a little bit concerning in Jenkins and Inari Tuala. But anyway, that's all they've got to roll with. The forwards, Jacob Safidi, Jaden Braley, Leo Thompson comes back from his suspension. So they desperately need him in the forward pack. Brails, a couple of weeks I think we'll be talking about him. Um, got a 19 on the weekend. Set for a massive price deduction. I think he's got a 60-something break even. So if he can get 60 minutes, I don't know if he will get it. He's still recovering from the injuries, but they've obviously got him on limited time. If he can come back in, get them get them minutes under his belt, play 60 minutes, we'll be talking about Braley, I think. Frizzell, Kai Pierce-Paul and Adam Elliott round out the last of the forwards there. Kai Pierce-Paul is still undervalued, minus two break even. I am jumping all over him this week. It seems like a no-brainer. He's still only 440K, 60s last two weeks. He's going to have that 40 roll out of his rolling average, barely attacking upside. So far, it's been a lot in base. I think he's got a line break assist in the last two games, which has bumped him up to 60 but he still had late 60s as well. So he still has a 60-point game in him, just in base and tackle busts. Offload coming along nicely for Kai Pierce paul So he, he he's definitely in my squad this week. Phoenix Crossland, Daniel Safidi, Jack Hetherington, and Matt Croker make out the interchange. For the Dragons, we've got Sloan, Lomax, Ravalawa, Suley, Bird, Kyle Flanagan, and Ben Hunt. Kyle Flanagan's put me in a bit of a sticky situation. I ended up going Lachlan Galvin last week. Massive from him. Pumped out a really good score. You cannot sell him. Do not even think about selling him. But Kyle Flanagan pumping out a 40. He now has a minus two or maybe it is a two in his break even. So Kyle Flanagan, if you still have him, it could be risky, but I may have to hold on to him for another week or two. I'm looking at a world... We're making some trades this week, possibly make no trades next week, and I'll be able to shift Flano into Nathan Cleary, which will be a massive trade, and it'll be perfect for what I brought Kyle Flanagan in for. Hoping for another decent run here against the Knights. Getting If he gets 40 again, that'll be perfect for my team. Um, Zachy Lomax pumped out huge in base. Tyrell Sloan, another one, 70-odd points. Um, yeah, look, they, they look decent, the Dragons. They, the, they, there's a lot of super coach effectiveness in their side at the moment. If effectiveness fits that sentence, I highly doubt it. But anyway, they look they look good. I, I like Zach Lomax. I think they will get some points against uh, the Knights team, although it is at Mac Jones Stadium. So potentially could be up against the Red Hot Knights. You just don't know what you're going to get from them. Zachy Lomax buy looks like a good buy. Uh, we'll go into the forwards. We've got Francis Molo. Jack DeBellin comes from the bench into the starting front row. That is where I like Jack DeBellin. Look at him over the next couple of weeks. We'll be keeping an eye on him. When he does play in the front row, if he gets those minutes, that is where he scores all his points. Jacob Little in at the hooking role. Luciano Leilua, Jaden Sewer, and Tom Eisenhuth. Tom Eisenhuth's been really good for the Dragons as well. He's been solid. He looks for a bit of a price rise as well. You could go worse options if you just wanted to go a Berber or a Salmon. If you don't have a lot of headaches, you wanted to go that way. A Tom Eisenhuth 
is is not a sideways bet at all. He looks like he has wrapped up that 13 jersey, and he may make some money for you. Jesse Marshke, Blake Laurie, Michael Molo, and Raymond Faitala Mariner break out the rest of that side there. Sorry, I've got to shut it. Crick it up. That'll work. Yeah, so that is the rest of the Dragon squad. On to the Saturday game. We've got the Rabbits versus the Warriors. Rabbits got the Chockeys finally off the nudie run there, but still weren't very convincing, I think. If the Warriors can harness what they've been doing, they've got a couple of, couple of people back for the week, so that's good to see from them. Um, Rabbitohs have got a couple more injury worries to worry about, but anyway, we'll get into that. For the fullback there, Latrell. For the wingers, Tane Milne and Isaac Thompson comes on. He was pretty hotly owned last year. Um, AJ, Alex Johnson, seems to be out for a fair four to six weeks sort of thing. He looks like he is unfortunately going to miss a bit of time. Thompson, he'll be one we'll be watching on that left-hand edge. Um, Not rushing in to get him with a couple of the matchups that the Rabbitohs have coming up, but still one to watch. Jackie Whiten on that left-hand edge looked really good, 100-plus for him. Um, look, if, if he can be as dominant as he was there against um, the Bulldogs, I know the Bulldogs are a little bit leaky. Left-hand edge is very dominant for the Rabbitohs, but still he looked really, really good. He may be an option in a couple of weeks. For the forwards, Tavita Tatola, Tom Burgess and Damian Cook, are the front row forwards. Keon Kalama Tungy, he's been really good the last two weeks. He seems to have just found his mojo, a really slow start, wasn't getting too many, not really attacking opportunities. He hasn't had too many attacking opportunities anyway, but his tackle busts have been massive the last couple of weeks. Um, someone's obviously put a rocket up him, so it's good to see. Cam Murray in the 13. I'm an owner of Cam Murray. Really good to see him get some attacking stats. That is what happens when you have a guy when that gets 50s and 60s in base, gets those attacking stats, beautiful, near 80 for him. On the bench, Michael Cheekham, Talis Duncan, Sean Kepi, and Davey Mowali. Not a great deal going on there for super coach owners. So, yeah, we will skip through that. For the Warriors, we have Chance Nickel Klockstad. He comes back. Unfortunately, that means Tane to a picky is more than likely a sell. He's probably a sell for me. I don't know how many other headaches I've got besides Tane Tuapiki and Tupanua, so they will be flicking out for me. For the wing, Dallin Wateni Zalesniak and Marcelo Montoya, Rocco Berry and Roger Tuavasa Shek. He moves back to the centre spot. Pretty good game from Roger. I, I thought he played a lot better than what his 54 or 56, whatever he scored, probably implicated you know he, he was breaking tackles left right and center he looked real flashy with the ball he did a lot of dirty work just didn't get those attacking stats that he you, you sort of expected at fullback I know a couple of people were pretty keen on captaining him, him but yeah just couldn't get those big attacking stats hell of a lot of base hell of a lot of tackle busts awesome to see I'm super happy with Rog in my center wings so him being in that center spot not a bad spot to be at all especially with this guy coming into the side Tamare Martin It'll be Tamari Martin and Sean Johnson. I know there was a lot of people thinking possibly Chanel, Chanel, Chanel Harris to beat may have came in. Geez, I butchered that. But anyway, Tamari Martin, I think that's awesome news for Roger Tuivasa. Sheck owners being on that left hand edge. Metcalf was predominantly a run first kind of guy. Roger Tuivasa Sheck could be seeing a lot more ball as Tamari Martin does like to ball play a little bit more. So good to see from that. From the forwards, Adam Fanua Blake, Wade Egan, Mitch Barnett, Jackson Ford, Murata Niakora comes in for Cape Well. He failed a HIA, so he will be out for a week. And Torhu Harris is rounding out in the 13 jersey. Not a great deal going on there. Wade Egan was really good coming back. Um, Adam Fanua Blake seems to be the number one front row forward at the moment. Um, I would be looking to sort of buy him in the next two to three weeks, I think, coming into origin. He, he will probably be a must over the origin period, I think. He's been really, really handy for owners. But anyway, we've got Freddie Lussick, Tom Alley, Bunty Afoa, and Jazz Tavaga coming on to the bench. We have got in the Seagulls Panthers game, that'll be Saturday, 5 30 game, the early one there. We have. Oh, sorry, these fucking things. Seagulls, sorry, I'm dealing with crickets at the moment. They're pissing me right off. But anyway, the Seagulls versus the Panthers, 5.30 Saturday. Uh, Tom Travojevic, Tommy Talao comes on. He looked like he was going to get a stack of cash, Tommy Talao, but with that low score in it, it doesn't look like he will. 
Uh, Cooler, Garrick, Jackson Paolo, Luke Brooks and Cherry Evans make out the back seven. Bit disappointing from Tom Trebojevic. I capped, ooh, excuse me, I captained him. Only the 54 from him, although, look, 54 seems to be around about his low point. So it's not all doom and gloom. He has a fucking hard game against Penrith. Fullbacks tend to go dreadful against them. Tommy's average is pretty average against the Panthers. So not expecting the world from Tom, although they are at four pines, which will be a bit of an uptick for him. Look, he, he looks decent. He's getting super involved. Had a really good start of the game, and then he just was error, 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 which is just so unlike him. So I am expecting a massive bounce back. We saw the hammer after round one. He had a massive bounce back. So I'm expecting the same from Tommy Turbo. Just probably won't captain him. The forwards, Taniela Paseca, Lachlan Croker, Josh Aloe, Hamal Olakawadu, Burbo and Jerbo around out the rest of the 13 there. Olakawadu, I think... After this game against Penrith, um, people should be seriously looking at getting him in. His attacking upside is just too good. His base stats are up this year. He, he seems to be, I think he could potentially be the number one 2RF in the game of Super Coach, if not rugby league in general, which could come as a bit of a downfall because he, he, he has potential that he's probably going to get picked for that blue side, but still. He is going to be a guy at the end of the year I think everyone is going to need in their squad. Looks really good. The Burbo issue. Now, I've got, I'm keeping Burbo. Break even of low 30s. He'll be lucky to get that. I, I think he's lucky to be in this squad. Um, Corey Waddell was looking decent coming off the bench. I think he's probably out playing Burbo. So if I need to move him on next week, I will. But this week, he's starting, so I'm going to keep him in my team. Um, on the bench, Carl Lawton, that man, Corey Waddell, Toffa Foa Sipley, and Nathan Brown make out the 17. For the Penny Panthers, Dylan Edwards, Sunia Taruva, Targo May, To'o, Jerome Luai, and Schneider is in the seven again. Bit disappointing for Nathan Cleary owners who did not sell. Awesome news for guys who did sell. The thing that we should be doing, and it's sort of something that I'm planning for, like I said before, turning Flano in into Nathan Cleary when he comes back. I'll probably have no hesitations with getting him in week one. I, I know there's a lot of risk around hamstrings the first week they're back, but still, it's Nathan. You need to have him. My team just looks better with Nathan in it. I don't care that he is 100% playing origin. I doubt Nico Hines does, so if I have that combination, I can I can work with that a little bit later on. Yeah, you need, you need to be working out a plan. The, the, you cannot be looking at this if you're looking at this game seriously. If you do not have a plan of a couple of weeks, what your potential trades are down the road. Now, I'm, I've got 160K in my trade account if I go with the trades I'm looking at. So that, that'll get me enough money, I'm hoping, to downgrade someone else and, and push into Cleary in a couple of weeks when he's back. But anyway, for these guys, uh, Dill Edwards, he looks to have taken the bulls by the horns for that attacking that attacking part of the Panthers game. He was superb, scored the most points out of anyone in Supercoach last round, so well done to Dill Edwards. And anyone who's got him is a bit of a pod. He started the year really, really hot. The concerning part with Dylan Edwards is I think he's playing that well. He potentially does get that New South Wales Blues jersey. Um. Not that Teddy's been doing anything wrong. I just think they need to start looking towards the future. But anyway, that's a different one. Taruva, 100-plus game as well. Got the third highest score for Supercoach last week. He was the beneficiary of that right-hand edge. Dill Edwards just sweeping, shoveling him ball. Their shape out the right-hand side was really, really good. He just, he just took full advantage of what was happening out on that edge there. So well done to him. Taylan May, I, I think he will be pretty highly sold this week, and to be honest, I'm not that keen on it. The Panthers draw through the origin period is really, really easy. I am happy to take, you know, a 22, very disappointing, but the first couple of weeks that they've had, he's been really, really good, and his base has been really, really good those first couple of weeks. Hoping he can come back to that. I think if you've got a guy there that can potentially hit 50s week in, week out, you are better off keeping him and getting rid of a Salmon or a Burbo Someone along that line. Schneider was good with a 61, but again, he by the time he will come in for a price range, 
Price rise, sorry, he will be null and void anyway. For the forwards, Moses Leota, Mitch Kenny, James Fisher-Harris, Luke Garner, Liam Martin and Isaiah Yo make out the 13. James Fisher-Harris comes back. He is named, which is crippling for Liam Henry. I would give it another week. Liam Henry's still in for a good little price rise there, possibly another two weeks. But you could potentially look at moving Liam Henry on in the next couple of weeks. Just have a little look of what's out there. If you were going to go a Liam Henry to maybe an Xavier Willison or something like that, or even a bump up, you know, you, you've got enough cash to move him to someone that you're pretty excited with in your front row forwards. Could always be an option. Um, other than that, not a great deal going on here. With that forward, Isaiah Yo has been fantastic this year. He'll, he'll continue to be that way. Um, he just may not pull as big a numbers because James Fisher-Harris does a lot of work in the middle when he's on. So one to watch there. But anyway, you've got Dane Laurie, Lindsay Smith. He's been uh, in sensational. Get it out. The time that James Fisher-Harris has had away, I'd be looking, if you do own him, have him for another week, and then I'd be flicking him as well to a potential keeper or downgrading him to someone because coming off the bench, he's probably not going to get those points. Uh, Liam Henry and Matt Eisenhuth. We already touched on Liam Henry. One to hold, but could potentially be a flick out in the next couple of weeks. The late Saturday game is the Dolphins-Tigers game. Dolphins really good. Tigers gritty this week, beating the Parramatta Eels. Um, this, This will be a tough one to tip, I think. I think the Dolphins are looking really good. They were a bit shaky the start of that game, though, from the weekend. So against the Titans there. So one, one to watch. But the Tigers, I'm, I'm so happy for Benji Marshall. Super happy for him of what he's doing. The pressure seems to be off him a little bit now with these two back-to-back wins. You know, could have been easy to say, oh, the Sharkies game fluke, but not, not to be. Got the Chockies over Parramatta, even though Parramatta did not have Mitch Moses. Still a good win for them. For the Dolphins, the Hammer, Izarko, Bostock, Jake Everillo, Herbie Farnworth, Cody Nicarima, and Isaiah Katoa, the exact same seven as last week. For those who bought in the Hammer last week, well done. For those who captained him, even bigger pat on the back for you guys. So happy I brought him in. There, there's a bit of worry there about is the Hammer a keeper, is he not, but he's got this super easy run coming through. I know the Tigers have been good, but it, they will test him, the Dolphins. Dolphins, top of the ladder. Did not see that after four rounds, but well done to them. The other one there is Jack Bostock. Pumped out two tries. Awesome stuff. He is going to make us a shitload of cash. I think he is a very playable option coming up against the Tigers in Queensland. So if you're going to go him, not knocking it at all. Jermaine Asako, back to his best. He is, you know, he, he's. I think he's going to prove that he's not a one-trick pony. He is going to be one of the elite CTWs of this year. So if you've got him and you've paid up for him and he's lost a bit of cash, don't be disgruntled. He's going to come good. Good, easy couple of games. Could be a stack of points in it for the good old Dolphins. The forwards there, Jesse Bromwich, Jeremy Marshall King, Tom Flegler, Felice Kafusi, Ewan Aitken, and Ray Stone comes into the 13 with Max Plath. Looks to miss a couple of weeks. I, I haven't heard exactly how many weeks he's gone, but I, I would imagine... Anywhere from three to six, surely for the big fella. I know first case, but that looked pretty ordinary, that um, that old hip drop there. Josh Kerr, he's been sensational, 60-something on the weekend with a try. Just a little bit concerned of what's going to happen when he doesn't get any attacking stats, but he is making owners some serious dosh. Kurt Donahue, Mark Nichols, and Kenneth Bromwich make out the 17. Tommy Flegler owners, well done to you guys. I actually don't think it's too late to jump on Tom Flegler. If you're looking at upgrading one of these blokes that's making a bit of cash there, I think he's a pretty good bet. 50 minutes again on the weekend, nice little try assist. A lot does come through their middles. I know They've got pretty decent shape out the back, but a lot of it comes off Jeremy Marshall King. He creates a lot of space for those guys. Jeremy Marshall King with a 60-something try assist, line break assist there for him. Um... Yeah, I, I just really like their middles. Like, it's it's insane to see blokes like Mark Nichols have so much space close to the line. I, I know he got a couple of good little tries last year as well, but it's all just created from Jeremy Marshall King. Tom Flegler seems to have a lot more space back at the Broncos. No knock to him. But um, Wilders there and Smoothie, they're not in the same class as Jeremy Marshall King is at hooker. So he's creating a lot of space 
for his front row forwards, which is awesome to see. For the Tigs, we've got Jareem Buller, Charlie Staines, Junior Tupu, Fatape comes in, comes in. He comes on into the centres with Justin Olam. A uh, bit of chalk and cheese, these centre pairing. Olam with a double on the weekend. Big scores back to back. I I imagine some people will be jumping on him. I probably can suggest going away from it. Although maybe because he is in this West Tigers team, he is just going to be such a strike weapon that they probably don't have out on the wings and centre positions that they may just be thinking, give the ball to Olam, give it to Juzzy. Solomon Afatape, um, anyone who jumped on him, he doesn't seem to be the big cash cow that some were hoping, although there is still time, he is still cheap. Uh, if you did buy him, don't look at selling him. Could potentially get a try or two in the next couple of weeks. He was unlucky to get a try against the Sharkies, so see what happens there with him. Sullivan and Caesar in the halves there. Stefano Utukamanu, he looks really good. He pumped out another 50-plus score. Having a look at some of his scores, he could be an option before the origin period. Looks to have really good base, getting some decent minutes, sort of fulfilling a lot of potential that people thought he had when he did start. But yeah, he looks really good. Appy Coruscant, unfortunately for owners, only a 45. But again, if you brought him in this week, or started with him, you are set for that price rise. If your goal is to get from Appy to Harry Grant, that could potentially happen in the next two two to three weeks if they stay on their bit of trajectory sort of thing going on there. David Clemmer, um, he seems to have fallen off a cliff there. He used to be an absolute staple for front row forwards, getting 60s every game. But anyway, he's gone. Isaiah Papali'i, bit of a disappointing night for him. Uh, Johnny Bateman and Vanua Pohl. Latu Fainu, Alex Safaf, Alex Twelve, and Samuel Fainu. Fainu got another big score. I talked really highly about him in the preseason. Looks really good. Looks like a bloody champion football player. Um, I still think you can jump on him. I still think he's set for a lot of cash rises, but if he's the least of your worries, then fuck, you've done really, really well. But yeah, I like the idea of Samuel Fainu. I'm a bit disappointed I didn't get on him at 260k. But, yeah, we'll go from there. Um, the big one there that's the out is Lachlan Galvin. Scoring 70-something points, getting 10 in the bin that he missed out on. He could have got 80 to 90-something. He looks like a fucking superstar. Like, the kid's 18 years old. He's got the oldest set of heads on head on him for an 18-year-old. He just wasn't overawed by the, by the Combank Stadium at the least, like, he just looked like he wanted to take the game by the horns and looks like like 18-year-olds nowadays that come into the NRL and are happy to do that shit. I was still living at home. I would have been in tears coming up against Junior Paulo, Regan Campbell, Gillard, Hopgood if fucking Benji Marshall gave me the keys to the Tigers and said, go on, mate, we're down by fucking eight. Do your best. I'd be curled in the fetal position on halfway asking for mum. But he's just, he's super calm, but he wants the ball. He wants to take the game on. He's got a good little show and go for a little, f- well, he's not that little. He's, he's quite skinny, but he's, he's very, very tall. His defense has been awesome. So it'll be disappointing to see him go for two weeks, but please don't think about getting him anywhere. Save yourself a trade, stick him on your pine and leave him there for a couple of weeks. Big price rise coming in for him. For the 4 o'clock game, we have the Cows versus the Titans. For the Cows, at the back, Scotty Drinkwater, Kyle Felt, Val Holmes, Zach Labart, Tuolagi, in the halves, Deedon and Townsend. That is all unchanged there. Now, look, this fucking back seven, back five in particular, will be looking to play that Cowboys game again, uh, that Broncos game again. They were bloody dreadful. Scotty Drinkwater still punched out nearly 70 points. Probably had the worst game I've ever seen him have. Adam Reynolds putting bombs up made him look like a four-year-old. Like he he was he was struggling under the high ball, something severe, but even still, it must have rattled his confidence. But he still got a decent score. So I'd be looking for a big game from him. Um, Val Holmes still pumped out just under 60 there. I bought him in this week and I I was actually pretty happy with that. He played terrible as well. He had hands like feet. But look pretty like look, he he still got through a ton of work. He's got some easy games coming up. He's got the Titans this week. Serious captaincy option for me for Val Holmes going on a little bit left field. Um I like him up against the Titans. I think the Cowboys, 
If they get that Arvo game, 4 o'clock, and the sun is shining, they will throw it around. They will want to bounce back from that Cowboys game because they were dreadful. Zach Laybutt, owners, um, he seems to have made you a bit of cash, but my goodness, that is why you do not jump on someone after one round. The forwards, Jordan McLean, Reese Robson, Tamalolo, Finny Fubiaki, Jeremiah Nano, and Ruben Cotter make out the 13. Finny Fubiaki with only the 30 points. That's sort of why I deviated away from him. Um, look, I, I think he is going to have a base of about 30. Played some good minutes, though. Um, I, I'm just sort of thinking he's more of a, a guy that you look for with a lot of upside or Besides that, he's probably not going to get these decent scores. If you got on him, he got cheap enough, so that's good. Just sit him there, let his price rise, rise. Playable option this week against the Titans, though. He could he could run over for a sneaky a sneaky meat pie if he gets a bit of a matchup up against maybe Khalees Hass or something like that. Be one to watch. Cotter pumped out 50. Um, I don't think his minutes were quite there because he was potentially left off. The game was all but over, and he was still sitting on the bench. For their interchange, we've got Granville, Neem, McIntyre, and Gajewski. Sam McIntyre, um, Shiv's probably sailed on that one, but still, he's made people a lot of cash, continue to make them a lot of cash, so awesome to see there. For the Titans, Jim, Jaden Campbell, just under 50 points there for him on the weekend. Um, if he comes out and blitzes it this week, he may be an option for 5-8 if you have dramas there, but still, I'm not 100% sold on Jaden Campbell or anyone in this Titans team for that matter. Harley Smith Shields, he's about 270 to 230k around that mid 230k 200k. He'll be one to watch in the next couple of weeks if he gets a bit of a decent price. Um decent score, sorry, he could be a bit of a price grab. Brian Kelly, Brimo, Jojo Fafita, Kieran Ford and Tanner Boyd make out the rest of that back seven. In the forwards, Moeki Fodawaka, Chris Randall, Jamin Joloff is the front row. Jamin Joloff with a nice little try. His base stats have been pretty good, actually. Jamin Joloff looks decent, a little bit expensive for my liking, and didn't get a huge amount of minutes. I think he gets a bit more minutes when he's playing the 13 sort of role there. So a bit unfortunate that he isn't going to get those minutes. I think he's a bit too expensive. But again, if that is your biggest issue that you want to get Jamin Joloff in, by all means, get him in. Khalees Haas, Bo Firma, Aaron Clark. Bo Firma is a definite sell. Only 30-something again for the week. Um, just, yeah, running outside of bloody Tanner Boyd isn't the position that we want Bo Firma in. I think you can sell him and move on to greener pastures. Kai Piss Paul is one of the examples that you would probably go there. Uh, Sam Verrills, Dave Fafita, Joe Stimson, and Pahulu comes onto the bench. Dave Fafita was decent in his limited minutes. Um, went on to that left edge, which is promising for Dave Fafita. Hopefully, the next couple of weeks, he can continue to come off the bench and we can see a bit of a drop from that 800K that he's worth. He bumped out of 57, so the break-even is going to get quite high for David Fafita, which will be good to see, and we'll be looking to pick him up later on. Um, we have the next one, Sunday game, Raiders-Eels, which will be the last game of the week, which is awesome to see. The Raiders back at home. Um, look, they were pretty good for the first 20 minutes there. Bloody sticky. You'll be firing a rocket up there, bums. Well, I tell you, leading 18-0 and getting dudded, like the fashion they got dudded, I thought their forwards would just continue to cruise over the poor old shark. He's decimated forwards, but anyway, not to be. So for this one, we've got Rapana at the back again. Schiller, Tomoko, Chris, Savage, Strange, Fogarty, Ethan Strange. I still think we have a fair bit to leak out of him. I think he's got mid, uh, probably high 20 break even sort of thing going on, but still a lot of points to milk out of him. James Schiller is interesting. He came on and scored a double, I believe. Watch out for him next couple of weeks. He actually was really, really good in the trials. So potential... Potential downgrade into keeping him, but again, we do have Hopawade recovering for some cooking burns, so <laughs> that, sounds, that sounds funny to say, but anyway, Schiller is an option if he retains that spot and kills it. For the forwards, Josh Papale, uh, the greatest nine in the game, saved my bacon, Danny Levi, Joey Tarpane, Hudson Young, Atta Mariotta comes in to that 12 jersey with um, bloody Elliot Whitehead and Hosking out. If you've got, you got on him as a front row forward, well done. Morgan Smithies retains the 13 jersey as well, so good stuff from him. 
The best thing about seeing Adam Ariotta in that number 12 jersey is the Corey Horsburgh effect. He looks to be a front row forward through and through this year, which is awesome to see for us Morgan Smithies owners, which is really, really good. Danny Levi ran the bullet, ran the bullet, ran the gauntlet with keeping him as my number nine. Sneaky try, uptick in minutes, came back on in the last couple of minutes of the game, which is promising to see. If you can keep that up, his, his price rise resets now. He's 60-something points. Fucking music to my ears. Got to keep Harry Grant, which is – I'm super happy about that, especially with Appy going 45. Danny Levi outscored him, which I would not have thought in a million years. So awesome stuff. Morgan Smithies, I'm giving him another week um, just because I've got Tupanua to go out and a couple of other things going on there. But Tommy Starling, Corey Horsburgh, Simi Sasagi, and Pasami Solo round out the interchange there for the Canberra Raiders for the Parramatta Eels. We've got Clint Gutherson, Mike Acevo, and Sean Russell on the sting. Bailey Simonson and Will Panasini in the centres. In the halves, Blaze Talagi and Dill Brown. Now, as excited as I am to get Talagi, I'm not 100% sure that this halves pairing works. Jesus Christ, I reckon they're stinging for a Brad Arthur at the mo- a Brad Arthur, a Jacob Arthur at the moment, and all you fucking dog shit Parramatta fans that booed that poor kid every time he touched the ball. Blaze Talagi is a run first kind of guy. Dill Brown, run first kind of guy. Now that Moses has gone down, you know what you bloody need. You need a ball player. What is Jacob Arthur? He is a bloody ball player. So you know what? I oh, I fucking hated seeing that from Parramatta fans booing that poor kid, you know. He he was 100% your best backup 5-8 option. So, look, I'm, I'm not convinced by this half pairing. They both just, which is awesome for their game, but the, it seems as though one of them needs a dominant half in there. Dill Brown, awesome player, super player, superstar of the game, but he has a run-first mentality, which is awesome because his running game is the strongest part of his game. Blaze Talagi, run-first mentality, awesome. It's the best part of his game. They just need a ball-playing half. You saw that. They only jotted 16 points up against the up against the Tigers, sorry, and they just looked a little bit clunky. Their saving grace was Gutho. Gutho was in everything. Um, looked really good. If that is something to go by and he has the goal king duties, and he is the guy that looks to try and drag them out of the shit. I actually don't mind Gutho. He, he'll be there through the buy periods. If that's what you're planning for, the buy periods, well, I, I, I can't turn you away from it. But anyway, 100-plus game from Gutho, which was good to see. For the forwards, Regan Campbell-Gillard, Joey Lussick, Junior Paulo. Now, Joey Lussick, I've got to eat my words here a little bit. I... I said in a couple of comments that I would rather Joey Lussick over Danny Levi any day of the week. How fucking wrong I was. Joey Lussick with a 20, I think a 27 or a 29. Yeah, disappointing. I didn't think he was going to go that low. I didn't think he was going to be in that position where I, I thought minimum he was going to be a 40, 40 plus. If anyone fucking jumped on from Danny Levi to Joey Lussick, bad trade. That you know, you got to lick your wounds when you do the bad calls. That is one that I sort of promoted a little bit as well. I thought if that was your biggest issue, I, I saw Joey Lussie is purely a buy from Danny Levi. Dog shit. Lucky I didn't do it. Um, I had bigger fires to put out, but yeah, sorry if anyone went on to that Joey Lussick train. Danny Levi, look, I, I'm not convinced with Danny Levi either. Don't get me wrong, but he got me through so I can get Harry Grant back. Junior Paulo, Sean Lane got a 60-something as well, so good to see from him. Ryan Madison in the 12, and Jermaine Hopgood. Jermaine Hopgood, another 80-plus game. Seems to be one of the superstar 2RFs of our game, so that is really good from Hopgood owners. Ryan Madison is one to watch there. Um, Still not sure about what is going on with Bryce Cartwright. Got named last week. They said he was out for six weeks, so that seems to be what's going on there. Just be interesting to see what happens with Kelma Tuilagi. I think he will come and take some of those minutes from Ryan. But still, always good to see Maddo in the starting side. Luca Moretti, Wiramu Greg, Joe Offahangawi, and Kelma Tuilagi wrap up the bench there for the Parramatta Eels. That is it. That is our team lists. Um, for anyone wondering, our league code is 726638. My trades that I am looking at here for this week, I'll just jump into my team here. 
But with the news of Satili Tupanua jumping on, sorry, j- jumping onto the bench, I'm probably going to look at getting rid of him. I think if I can swindle him to Kaipi's his pool, that'll be the best thing for me. Um, we are going to be looking at moving on to a picky, to a picky. Really, just only kept him. Not not that I was worried about keeping him, but I really only kept him because I thought, hopefully. Chance Nuka Klockstad is out for another game. We could get another price rise out of him. But Tua Picky to Blaze Talagi, he's set for a massive price rise. Although, like I said, I'm not convinced. His game does seem to be super coach friendly. 48 last week, so I'm pretty happy with that. Um, the dramas around my squad at the moment is probably my halves. I'm going to have to start Luke Brooks in my halfback and Kyle Flanagan, although Kyle Flanagan got a 50 or 49. And comes up against the Knights. Kyle Flanagan's been pretty good. Um, I, I, I am nervous about that, although I was nervous about Lachlan Galvin, although I would I would love to have Lachie Galvin in there at the moment. He punched out 66, but a year. I, again, I think that's what will be happening with my squad. My squad. I'll finalise that on Thursday. I'll get that out on our Instagram again. I am looking at Kai Pierce paul and Blaze Talagi in Tupanua and Tuapiki will be out. Like I was talking about with our planning, I, I'm probably going to look to next week. If if there's no injuries in that, next week we'll 100%, no trades. We'll leave it as is. We will get Nico Hines back into that squad and we'll be able to sort something out there. Going in for the week after, potentially could be looking at moving Ruben Cotter on when Joshy Curran gets jewels. He should get jewels by round six. Moving him up there, buying a second row forward, and then Flano out. Brooksy back into my 5'8", and then Cleary in. So, fingers crossed, no dramas next week, no dramas the week after, and we can really have a little push-up into the top 1,000, which is our goal for this year. Sitting at 9,000, we've jumped up nearly 42,000 spots in the last two weeks. So, anyone who is stuck behind and in a bit of a rut there, don't give up. You are two decent weeks. I haven't even had cracking weeks. 1,100 this week, 1,090 last week. So two decent weeks, bumped up 50,000 spots, 40,000 spots, so that sort of thing. So, yeah, that's about all we've got time for. Take care, legends. Thanks for tuning in. Appreciate it. Have a good one.